to another episode of The Biggest Transformation, where we are journeying with our cast, our Magnificent Seven, through their, their battle against weight loss, their battle against the bulge. And we are just rounding out week nine, where we are about to jump on with the cast, do our nine-week weigh and see how they did. And we are like really in the home stretch of the competition. We have three full weeks left before we crown the winner of season one. If you have not heard, we just launched uh, open enrollment for season two of The Biggest Transformation. And so I will link the application below in the description box, as well as the video where we fully talk about season two, which is going to be pretty epic, pretty special. And so let's go ahead and jump on with the cast see how they did this week. You're going to get to hear about something pretty special that we all did together, what their thoughts are, their feelings, how it went for them. It was, it was pretty epic. So let's go ahead and jump on, get our weigh-ins done and get into the episode. It's weigh-in day, your favorite day of the week. Happy day, happy day, it's weigh-in day. <laughs> All right. Karen, step into the scale. One seventy-two point two. Shane Short. Three twenty-three even. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, Denise, you are up, girlfriend. Three seventy one or two seventy one point six. Yep. Yeah. Andy. Oh, here. Two hundred five point four. Oh, that was that was better. Okay, okay. Ashley. Two zero eight point four. Judy. Judy, stepping into the bathroom, stepping on the scale. Two eighteen point five. And last but not least, Miss Peggy. Two One forty five point six. <laughs> spot moving everybody back out of the way again reclaiming the title here <laughs> with a total of 45.9 pounds lost 17.8 percent of her body Woo! six pounds this week karen i mean you just you just nailed it this week second place nipping at her heels andy with a total of 45.2 pounds lost 15.5 percent 1.8 pounds this week Third place, Shane. Shane, you lost 5.4 pounds this week, 63.6 .6 pounds overall, a total of 14.4%. Moving into the fourth place spot, like, hey girl, I see you, Miss Peggy. 3.2 pounds this week, 25.4 pounds overall, 10.9%. The Pegster, fourth place, girlfriend, while traveling, while in Florida, while out and about doing your thing. <laughs> awesome job. Um, fifth place, Denise. Denise, you hit the 30-pound mark. 30 pounds yeah. last. Two pounds this week, 9.9%. Your body, you have lost. <laughs> in sixth place. 27.8 pounds total, two pounds this week, 10% of your of your body mass, Miss Ashley, sixth place girlfriend, 27.8 pounds. In seventh place, Judy with 1.9 pounds lost this week, 23.3 pounds since we started, and a total of 
8% of your fluff, Judy, is, what, what's the word I'm looking for? It's gone. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just go with, it's gone, it's gone. So total this week, 22.9 pounds lost for a grand total through nine weeks of 261.2 pounds. 261.2. We are on target to cross over the 300. We are going to definitely cross over that 300 pound mark before we finish this. 300 pounds. I, I was doing the math last night. I'm like, can we do it? I'm like, oh yeah, we can certainly do it. So congratulations. Good job. Yeah. Awesome job this week, guys. Um, so Monday, this, this past week, we did, we did like a fun bonding thing together. We did a, we did a workout together. Hey. Hi. I'm so excited. Yeah. <laughs> our, our, we have a special bonding meeting tonight. Is Yeah. So seven years ago, I started this journey we are going to do the second workout that I ever did so 288 pound Carmen completely <laughs> out of shape like hadn't worked out you know I believe God made me to be one of those people that just you know he made those workout Richard Simmons like give me another burpee people and then he made me and this was the second workout I ever did and I remember when the workout was done I thought I was going to die and I thought, what in the hell are you doing? Like, I can remember feeling so unsure of myself and feeling so like, what in the heck? But at the same time, feeling so proud and empowered that I had just done that. And so let me go ahead and screen share and I'll show you what we're gonna do. Oh, P90X. This is bringing me back. Oh, Plyo? I saw that. I will be the modifier. Me too. <laughs> I cannot believe you did P90X. Because I can't do no jumping, so yeah, I'll be modifying. Need a chair? Okay. So, I, I don't want to hear what y'all can't do. Knock it off with that nonsense yeah. right about now. I'm that's right. Now, here's the deal. I don't expect anybody to push past their limitations. I expect every single person to have to modify, and that's freaking okay. That is okay. But I don't want no whining. I don't want no, I can't do this. I want us to focus on what we can do. Because what you guys need to know is seven years ago, I couldn't do a whole lot of nothing. Come on, I was 288 pounds. I was out of shape. I had just had a freaking baby. I mean, you know, when I jumped, everything jiggled. So this ain't about perfection. This ain't about you keeping up with anybody. This is about you doing your best. If you have a part of your body that, this is plyometrics, okay? This is jump training. But if you can't jump because of a limitation, don't jump. Again, there is no shame in your game. This is you bringing your best. This isn't me expecting you to jump if you can't jump. This isn't expecting me you to size yourself up against anybody else. This is expecting you to bring you and you to do you and you to do your best. This ain't about anybody getting hurt. This ain't about you feeling whatever. This is just about us doing this together. Me sharing um, something that I was able to do at 288 pounds. And I wasn't able to keep up with them, but I was able to do my best and forget the rest. And so hopefully this gives you a little bit of perspective because what, well, listen, this is, this is all I want to say before we get started. I always hear people, I can't, I can't, I'm so out of shape. I can't do this. I can't do that. Yes, you freaking can. We don't got to keep up with Tony. We can do hard freaking things. And so we're about to do this 59 minute workout. There's 45 minutes of work. If you take out the warm up at the cool down and just remember my second workout, 288 pounds, completely out of shape. I literally did this workout that we're gonna do tonight. One, two, three. Woo 
And don't forget, you modify as much as you need to. I feel my energize kicking in. Wow. Awesome job. Good job. Congratulations. All right, who wants to do it again? Oh my goodness, guys, awesome job. You guys freaking killed it. Uh, so proud of you. You guys are also sweaty. Yeah, so are you. Shay, why are you still lifting weights, you animal? Because we didn't work the upper body. I did today. We did the original P90X plyometrics. And here's what I will tell you. That is one of the hardest workouts in our workout library. I believe it's probably one of the hardest minute for minute workouts. If you do the entire thing without modifying and even with modifying, it's freaking hard. It just, it, it is one of the hardest workouts minute for minute that has probably ever been created in my personal opinion. Uh, and when I first got started losing weight again, six years ago, that was the second workout I ever did. I did another workout on day one and that was my day two workout and day, my day one workout, I made it 17 minutes into the workout. And I was like, oh my gosh, my heart, I thought my heart was going to beat out of my chest. And I was like laying on the floor thinking that I was going to die. And then I came into day two, a day two. I'm like, all right, that was day one. It's day two. I'm stronger plyometrics. All right. Okay. That sounds kind of athletic. I was always an athlete in high school and I just I literally was like, O oh, to the M to the G. There are actually human beings on this planet that can do that because here I was morbidly obese, 288 pounds watching the people on the screen. And it was like, I was so far from where they were at. Like I didn't even do that workout in a place where I was in shape. I did that workout in a place where I hadn't been working out. Like I literally was coming off the couch and did that workout. And I don't think I could do any of the moves right. I could move my body and I could try, but if you would have had a camera on me and a camera on the people doing the workouts, I, they, it would not have looked like we were doing the same workouts at all. And so it was kind of, uh, and so a couple of reasons I wanted to do that with you. So many times, you know, when I, when I recommitted seven years ago to losing weight and I made the decision that I was going to combine fitness with nutrition, I didn't look for a workout that I could do. I didn't look for a workout that was going to be easy. I didn't look for a workout that was going to, I didn't look up, I didn't look for a workout that was going to meet me where I was at. I looked for a workout that got results. I looked for a workout <laughs> that was going to challenge me. Mm -hmm. I looked for a workout that, yes, I couldn't do all of it. Understand, I, and I've only learned this through coaching through walking people. Most people are looking for something they can do. They're looking for something, which let me tell you, if you ever start a workout program and you can do all of it and it doesn't have you cussing and going F this, I don't know, because it, in order to change you, it has to challenge you. If it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. And so even today, uh, you know, some of the workouts that get added into our streaming library, I do them, but then I would never go back to them because they don't challenge me enough. And if it doesn't challenge me, it doesn't change me. And so we, our bodies can do much more than, we th when, uh, than our mind thinks they can. They are capable of so much more. And so I wanted to do that workout together for a couple different reasons. A, to challenge you to challenge your mind, to challenge your body, to challenge what you think you're capable of. And B, to hopefully, if you had any of those things left where 
a lot of times when we start working out, if we pick a challenging workout, we can get into this place of beating ourselves up. We can get into this place of, well, that was stupid. I couldn't do any of that workout. Why the heck am I even trying? We can get into this cycle where we start to beat ourselves up and pick on ourselves for what we can't do versus recognizing the fact that no, like we just got our butts off the couch. And when we're overweight, that's typically our favorite place is the couch or somewhere sitting. We just got ourselves up from sitting and we just pushed ourselves to do something that we didn't even, that's totally out of our character. Does that make sense? Because when we struggle with weight and doing something like that is out of character. We don't get overweight by doing things like that every day. Are you with me? And so, so to challenge you, and if there was any residual things hanging around inside of you that somehow wanted to compare yourself to some of the most fit people on the planet, to root that out. Because when, you know, and I, I, I was really proud of Denise because she came on after the workout and I know she's going to talk about that. And she discussed, hey, I'm beating myself up right. I was beating myself up. I wasn't in a good place, but I got a hold of that broad. I got her back on the leash, smacked her around a little bit and said, knock it off. Because that's what you got to do to yourself sometimes. If you ever get in a place where you're having a pity party or where you're having this, well, that didn't work out exactly the way I want to. Like it is a, if you can ever get to the place where you can possess the skill to smack yourself up a little bit, to take yourself, shake yourself and be like, no, this is not reality. These are your emotions. This is not actually what's happening. Snap out of it. And I think we all have moments where we need that. <laughs> and when you can actually get to a place where you can do that to yourself and say, no, snap out of this, freaking get out of this punk girlfriend, get back to reality. Because the reality is you all showed up. Reality is you all kicked butt. Reality is you all took one step closer to where you want to go, which means you took one step further away from where you were. And so that is huge. Every step closer to your goal is one step away from where you were and one step closer to where you want to go. And if you keep stepping closer to where you want to go, it's pretty inevitable that you're going to wind up there. You're going to be there. And so yeah. And as you take those steps, you're getting stronger. You're progressing. And this journey of health, it's never about perfection. It's about progression. It's not about perfection. It's about progression. Because as you keep progressing, you're moving forward. And most people spend their life chasing perfection instead of progression. And if you're chasing perfection, you and I both know there's only one perfect person that ever walked this earth and you and I are not him. Never gonna be him, can't be him. And besides they hung him on a cross, it didn't end well for him. So my point is like, stop expecting perfection. When you're doing a workout program, you should expect it to challenge you. You should expect that there's some things you can't do. You should expect, you know, sometimes I've been working out what, six days a week for uh, going on set. Actually, no more than seven years now. I've been working out six days a week. Sometimes I can get into this place where it's like, gosh, why can't I do this? I should be able to do this. I've been working out six days a week for seven years. Why am I still struggling with this? Why is this giving me a freaking burp today? Why are my legs still sore? <laughs> why are my calves like, what? We can always get into a perfection mode versus a progression mode. All right. Does that mean, I hope that makes sense to you guys. And so always chase progression, progressing, not perfection. Chasing perfection will lead you to frustration and quitting. And hopefully for all of us, this is a journey we're going to be on together much longer than 24 weeks. Because if you don't stay on the journey of chasing progression with your health, you're either progressing forward or you're progressing backwards. There's no, there's no such thing as standing still. If we're on this journey together for 24 weeks, 12 weeks in the regular phase, 12 weeks in the lifestyle phase, and then all of a sudden you get done and you're like, all right, woo -woo, I got to my goal. I'm going to stay right here. No, you ain't. No, you're not. If you do not continually choose to progress forward, your, boo your booty, your behind is going to progress right back to where you came from. 
It has to be a conscious choice to continually progress forward. Because if not, you're, if you're not progressing forward, you're progressing backwards, one or the other. So anyway, I, I want to chit chat with you guys and I want to kind of see what was it that you were thinking during the workout, after the workout? What was it that you were thinking? You know, what was going through your mind? Did it challenge you? Was it harder than expected? Was it easier than expected? Were you like, what in the hell? How did she do this at 288 pounds? <laughs> I just want to know what was in your brain when you were doing that. Did you feel defeated? Did you feel empowered? Did you feel, for me, that's the first time I've done that workout in a hot second. And it was, for me, was um, I was really proud of myself because it was so cool to see how far I've come. And, you know, that night I was talking to my husband and he got all emotional. And he's like, he's like, how did it go? And I'm like, Wah! and he's like, whoa, what is going on? And it was happy tears, but it was like remembering back to the place where I literally thought I was, I, I literally thought doing that workout could kill me. Like I literally thought I was in such a bad shape with my, in my health that doing this, that warning they put on the screen, that was for people like me. <laughs> that was for 288 pound people doing the workout that weren't even in shape, hadn't worked out at all. And I was like, wow, like that is like, you know, when Ashley was like, tell my kids I love them. <laughs> I had those same thoughts like crap. So to come from a place where that's where I was and to this week be able to keep up with the people on TV that were my inspiration that so outpaced me, so outdid me, was just like, yeah, that shows you what progression can do. That is a perfect example of where we can progress to if we just keep going and we refuse to give up. And so, Karen, you are going to be up first, girlfriend. Um, but when you said that we were doing P90X, um, I was excited. I, I didn't know, you know, I mean, I didn't know before then. Um, but I remember doing P90X when I was in, when I was like 260 pounds, we had just got done with um, T25. And then we went right into P90X. So yeah, I think I was at like 260, 255. And I remember doing that workout and I remember um, sometimes not being able to keep up or being so short of breath. So I was excited because I'm in a different place now. And it was a challenge to myself knowing where I was before and knowing where I was going to be this time. Um, what was I going to be able to do? And I was very proud of myself. i I felt like I kept up with Tony for the most part. Um, my heart rate got up to 142, which I think we all strive. I strive to get my heart rate up there because I know when my heart rate gets up there, I'm burning calories. Um, so I was excited. I was proud, um, you know, and, and then I felt accomplished when it was all said and done. So yeah. I liked it. It was, um, I thought, my God, I haven't done this in a long time. So I'm so glad you picked it out. Shane Short. Hi. I like how you wear that sweatshirt quite a bit because I think it really showcases like, I can see you getting smaller. Thanks. I, it's my favorite hoodie at the moment. And I know I'm not going to be able to wear it much longer. <laughs> so I'm wearing it as much as I can. Hey, you can make it a dress. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, brother. How did you, what, what was going through your brain? How did you feel? How did you do? What? Tell me. So uh, as soon as I found out it was P90X, I was like, oh, okay, here we go. Uh, that's one that I did years ago um, and gave up on. And I remember specifically skipping the plyometrics ones um, each week. Like, I, I think I probably did it a couple weeks. And then I was just like, nah. And I'd go to, you know, chest and back or something. I don't know. But uh, yeah, it, 
I, uh, as we started doing it, I was like, oh, I remember some of this stuff. I, I used to work out in my basement and I only had seven foot ceilings or less. So I'm six three and I would jump um, and I was always worried I was like gonna hit my head or I couldn't put my arms very far above my head down there. So having the workout place I do now, I was like, oh, I can do some of this stuff without worrying about it. It's pretty cool. I did get a little concerned after I don't I don't remember exactly what it was I think he had us do like 30 squats or something and then you find out like this is still the warm-up and I was like oh <laughs> oh this is the warm-up that's right this is an hour-long workout so I was concerned in the beginning I started pushing hard and I was just like I'm on camera I didn't even look at you guys for for any of the workout I was just dead focused <laughs> like I'm being recorded, I'm gonna push as hard as I can and so be it, whatever happens. So I felt like I did really good. Um, there was a couple things I modified and I was totally okay with that. I'm still a little worried about my knees being as heavy as I am, so I'm, I'm just careful. But uh, yeah, all in all, I was, I was surprised at how well I was able to do. And uh, it sure was a good workout. I was completely drenched with sweat at the end. The knees! And Mr. Kitty Cat. Yep. Say hello. <laughs> so Denise, tell us, girlfriend, how was that for you? But yeah, though it uh, it was rough. Let's just say it was rough. Going, I should start with this. I was super excited, like to be honest, about the idea of doing a group workout because I have done those a couple of times with you in the past, and they were always tons of fun. So I was going into it with like pure excitement. Like, yeah, we're going to do this. It's going to be so good. And as soon as I saw the name plyometrics, I was like, crap. Like, no, Carmen, why? It's the program my knee cannot do. <laughs> and as soon as I got that in my head, the rest of the workout, it was like, I just zoned out into the space of like, this sucks why did she pick this? Why of all the workouts did she have to pick the one that is the worst for the knee? And it was just in my head. So, and I did recognize at the time that it was my head, even though you gave us this whole talk ahead of time, made no difference. <laughs> I was frustrated right from the start. <laughs> When, when I when I put it on the screen, it was so funny. I was telling my husband, you were like, well, I can't, da, da, da. And I was like, nope, I don't want to hear what you can do. And you were like, yep. <laughs> and so no, you're right. You were right from the beginning. Yeah, it was like literally in my head because because I'm literally told no jumping, like at all from my physiotherapist, the doctors, the surgeons. And I see plyometrics and I'm like, that's all jumping. Like I knew that from all the working out I've done. And I knew that there was modifications because I've learned a ton of them. But for whatever reason, with Tony Horton, I discovered the modifier doesn't modify. So, <laughs> so I was like standing there and I'm staring at the screen and I'm like, Half the time he's jumping from one move to another without really showing. And I'm like, what am I doing? I don't even know how to do this. And, and then everyone at the end is talking about, look at my sweat. And they're going on and on. And I'm like, what sweat? Like, I feel like I just went for a walk or up my stairs to my bedroom and back. Like, I just, and so I felt so defeated in that moment mentally like, I thought I'd come so far. I feel like I've made so much progress physically. I can do all these amazing things with the program I was in. And I do this one workout and I was like, I suck. That was my mindset that night. And good for all of you that you all sweated and you all got hot and good for you that you could do all the jumping in the book. <laughs> I had probably the worst attitude I've had about working out in a very, very, very long time. <laughs> I got off the phone, I got off the call with everyone and I just cried. I was like, why do I have to deal with this garbage? Why do I have to have such a crappy knee? Cause like, I want to be on there telling everybody how sweaty I am. And I want to be on there telling everybody like 
look at me, I could do this, you know? And I couldn't feel that way at that moment. I was like, okay, Denise, like, where is this coming from? Like, why again, like sort of like that other week I had a few weeks back, this whole self thought, like what is happening in my head? again, where I was like, ah, oh, throw in the towel with this group, let them all succeed. You know, like it was just such a horrible space I got to in my head. And my friend, Carol, I've talked about before, who's been on this journey a long time. I called her and I was like, Carol, you know what program they picked? And I started kind of ranting and, <laughs> and she literally just looked at me. She, and she said, and you keep getting up every single day and you do a workout. She goes like, truly that's inspiring. Do you see that at all? Like you're inspiring me. And just having her have me stop in that moment and recognize, yeah, I didn't sit on my butt last night. I did still stand there. Even if a couple of times I felt like I wasn't doing anything, I still was there. And then Karen came on and she's like, get out of your head. And then I had other people come on and be like, Denise, seriously, like get out of your head. And so by the end of that day, I was like, wow, that was a crazy whirlwind of emotions, like wowzers. Like, and I was reminded once again, like my mind is what gives me so much defeat all the time. <laughs> like it's what creates this roller coaster in my life, this constant feeling of failure, or like I'm a nothing or I can't do something. And these can'ts just fester. And so, yeah, I had a wake up call that week, this last week, a major wake up call. Like I got to get out of my head. Like I seriously got to get out of my head and start seeing all my progress instead of focusing on the one thing that I'm struggling with majorly right now and focus on everything else that I've been doing. So it was a good, good week, actually, even though it started off, I felt like, oh boy, this is not a good week. And by the end of the week, I'm like, no, I needed this week to wake me up again. Oops. Oh, okay. Hi, Andy. Hey. Okay. What was I thinking of? Well, it turns out the first beach body workout that I ever did, a guy gave me P90X and I was just completely out of shape. And it was, it was like hor horrible. And, um, but I did it. Okay. I, I struggled through it. And um, I think Peggy and I were doing it together at the time. This is years ago. And uh, when you popped in P90X, all those memories, I'm like, oh, my gosh, it's P90X. <laughs> P90X. And I just, fin I'm just finished Muscle Burns Fat Advance. So I thought I'm doing pretty good. And that P90X kicked my butt. And, um, but it was good. And uh, I couldn't do, I had to modify. I couldn't, you know, I'm thinking, well, I haven't done an hour workout yet. So I'm like, this is an hour. Oh my gosh, this is, this is crazy. But it was, it was fun doing it together. I really like that. Um, pushed through it. And I, I knew I was like, okay, this is a different workout. So if I continue to do this workout, it'll, it'll progress and get better. But um, it was interesting what you said earlier about, you know, um, not being able to do everything and not becoming discouraged being being a, a ruby slash sapphire my son is doing the works and he's in really good shape and the work is really hard he's like dad you can't do the work and i'm like oh i'm gonna do the work now <laughs> so, so oh the other thing i was thinking i was how in the world this is what carmen put on the first time are you this is crazy i so I was trying to picture you, Carmen, at 288 pounds, <laughs> trying to do that. And, um, but that was actually inspiring that, that you, that's the first workout you did. So I'm thinking, dang it, if Carmen could do that, it, it, not perfectly, of course, at 288 pounds, then I need to push through this thing and, and not, you know, for me, not complain about it because, I, I just can't imagine why well, I, I did remember back when I started on it and it was, but I was thinking more about you doing, it. I couldn't believe that was the first one that you did. So um, yeah, those are some of my thoughts. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it. That's part, awesome. part of it's the challenge that my son said, I probably couldn't do it. So <laughs> I have to do it. <laughs> Don't believe me. Just watch. Woo. Yep. Yeah. What's that song?
That's so awesome. And I love that your son unknowingly totally challenged his dad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's yeah, so cool. I think that I, I could do it, but not now. I, it'd be a long time. So, yeah. I'll show you. <laughs> <Ow>. <laughs> Ashley. Friend. Oh. So the workout, how was it for you? What was going through that, that, that brain of yours? Um, I mean, when, when you told us we were going to do a group workout, I was a little worried just because I feel like I've only done 21 day fix. And so, um, I've heard you guys talk about Tabata, Mala, you know, all kinds of crazy name things. And then I looked it up one day and saw this lady in a plank holding a ball between her legs and then like doing one leg over here and one leg over there. So I was terrified, downright terrified um, of what you were going to have us do. But um, then when you said it was P90X, I got really excited, stupidly, because I used to hear a lot of people talk about that back in the day, like all my fit friends. And I was like, I was just like, oh, really? <laughs> Here we go. Um, yeah. And then once it got going, it, like Shane said, I did not have a chance to even care about what any of y'all were doing. <laughs> I could, I had just had to focus on, oh my gosh, is my, what is my heart rate supposed to be? <laughs> I might be dying, but it's okay. <laughs> um, it was fun. It was fun. Well, and it kind of fired you up. Like you had some residual even the next day. I did almost too much. Because <laughs> then I was like, "Woo, I'm going to do that every day, blah, blah, blah. It, it definitely had me fired up for a number of days. But it proved to you that you could do it. Exactly. I mean, through an hour long, intense, insane workout. Oh yeah, there was definitely a, like you talked about in the beginning, there was a mental barrier that was completely shattered. So awesome. Yeah, I had to turn, my battery's dying, so I'm in a weird spot. But yeah, my daughter, I'm, I'm in a Disney room. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, look at you looking all voluminous this morning. Yeah, that's old bedhead, but. It works. I kind of have well, Barbie. You can it looks nice. It. I like it. Thank you. I think it, if I shave my head, I might lose more. Um, <laughs> yeah. So what the were, P90, what were you thinking? I don't know. The P90X, I, I, it made me know that I wasn't working out as hard as I could. That's what it did for me. So the other day I worked late on Thursday and I had to do, I had to do three workouts yesterday. And my daughter comes downstairs after she did her one hour private. Um, and she let me know she burned 1000 calories with Rodrigo in one hour. And she's like, mom, maybe you should do that. And I'm like, yeah, I'm really not a D one athlete and I'm not going to be playing soccer. But she, so she was watching me and I was like dying on my third. And she goes, mom, you're doing the wrong workouts. You're doing like three cardios. You were supposed to do one recover. I was like, oh, okay. So, I mean, I, pu I pushed myself, but the good thing about P90X is I, I definitely can't jump either. My knee, I mean, hopefully when more weight comes off, my knee will be better, but it definitely triggers my knee. So I was doing a lot of modifications, but I, I didn't feel defeated. I felt more empowered. Um, I feel more defeated when my scale doesn't move. <laughs> but not least, Miss Peggy coming at us from Florida. Oh, look at those arms. Look at those shoulders. Arms. Uh, wow. <laughs> this is a grandma. Wow. You're Peggy, you're amazing. All right. So what were you thinking, hot stuff? Um, well. I was excited when you said we were doing it. When you said we were doing P90X, I was mad. Not mad, but like, dang it. Because that program I have never done because it has always intimidated me. Because I can't do pull-ups. I can't do push-ups. It's just, I don't know. But, um, 
um, then I got done and I was like, I had my recover and then I got cocky. <laughs> I was like, I worked so hard. I'm going to have a bar and, and I worked so hard. I'm going to just, just thinking that it was okay to just keep eating. And the next day I was up two pounds from what I was Sunday morning on Monday or on Thursday. I don't know, whatever day I was up two pounds. I was like, so mad at myself. <laughs> so I was like, I can't get cocky. I can't, I have to just keep pushing and pushing and pushing and not um, let my ego get in the way that, cause I still modified. I mean, I wasn't, I didn't do it perfect, I, but I work up a sweat and I, you know, I work hard and um but it, that's what i have to do to get to my goal not so that i can eat more <laughs> so that is hilarious mm -hmm. oh yeah i just burned all those calories let me just go eat them <laughs> <laughs> i was like eat <laughs> week we are going to be coming into week 10 week 10 we are officially getting into the home stretch and so so here's what i will tell you coming into week 10 over the past nine weeks we've completed nine full weeks together and what we've done inside of those nine full weeks is we've created something magical called momentum and so right now you have momentum working in your favor. You have momentum working for you, not against you, but for you. And so when you combine your efforts with the momentum you've created, that's where things happen that you're just like, whoa, how did I, you know, like Karen losing 6.6 .6 pounds this week. That wasn't just off the work she put in this week. That was her with her momentum that she's created. There's only one thing that can stop the momentum that you've created over these past nine weeks, and that's you. And so I want to encourage you this week as we're coming into week 10, we're coming into the home stretch, that you would work with the momentum instead of against it. That you would not allow self-sabotage to creep in. That you would not allow doubt to creep in that you would not allow the, oh yeah, I've worked so hard, give me the, give me the McFlurry, give me the, you know, extra dose of avocado, guacamole, chips and salsa, whatever it is, that you would embrace momentum, work with it, so that these last three weeks, no joke, for some of you, these last three weeks are going to be your best three weeks. These last three weeks are gonna be your strongest three weeks. They're gonna be bigger than your first three weeks. Why? Because your first three weeks, you didn't have momentum, but you've spent the last nine weeks creating it, cultivating it, growing it, protecting it, watering it. And if you harness that momentum and you use it, I am telling you, these last three weeks are gonna be powerful. They're gonna be big. You're gonna see drops on the scale. You're gonna see yourself getting stronger emotionally, mentally, physically, because you can't calculate momentum. Momentum's the one factor you can't calculate. You know, when I started losing weight, my second 90 days, I lost more weight than my first 90 days and I had less to lose. Mm -hmm. 10 more pounds my second 90 days. The only difference was momentum. I had momentum with me the second 90 days and I was building it the first 90 days. And mm -hmm. so, you built momentum. Use it. Look out for those things, self-sabotage. Self Look out for the things that might try to come in and slow you down. Look out for the voices that are gonna whisper, it's just a piece of pizza, you can have some. <laughs> it's a lick of peanut butter. It's just a shot of tequila. It's mm -hmm. just a protein bar. And use momentum for, to propel you. Don't stop it. Don't slam on the brakes nine weeks in with an unplanned shot of tequila. <laughs> mm -hmm. Slam on the brakes and shut the door of momentum with toast with peanut butter and jelly. <laughs> your plan and know that you're doing amazing and you've got this and 
make your mind up now on how you're gonna finish. We're not at the finish line yet, but it's now in sight. Mm -hmm. And sprinters don't stop when they see the finish line. They don't even stop when they, they don't stop until after they cross. They cross the finish line still running at a full sprint. When they start to see the finish line is when they reach into their back pocket and they pull out the extra reserves. And so right now is the time for you to reach in that back pocket and pull out those extra reserves. Right now is the time for you to reach in that back pocket and pull out. What was the movie in the Fast and the Furious where they, they hit the button when they were getting close to the finish line, they hit the button and they went like it propelled them forward even faster. That's the, the, this is that moment. This is that time. This is your time and you guys are doing amazing. 261.2 pounds lost in the past nine weeks by the cast. As their coach, I could not be prouder of them. And really, it's not just about the weight they're losing. It really is about the transformation they are going through, the transformation of their mind, the transformation of their feelings, their emotions, the transformation, yes, of their physical bodies, but the transformation they're making extends it's much bigger than just their physical bodies and to see the struggles they've had to see the old habits that they've had to overcome to see the struggles that they've overcome and are still overcoming is so inspiring and so if you have been inspired by any of them or if you have struggled with any of your own weight loss struggles season two enrollment's currently open we are currently in the process of casting season two, picking out who the cast is gonna be, who's going to be going through, tackling their own demons, their own battles, who is ready to get off of the sidelines and in the game. So if that is you, and you know that there's more to life than what you're currently living, and you wanna be considered for season two, which is gonna be starting in just a couple of weeks, then the link for the application is in the description box. I wanna encourage you to apply. I want to encourage you to take a leap of faith. I want to encourage you to step out of your comfort zone and say, I know there's more to life than what I've been living. And so thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your support. And we will be back next week with another episode of The Biggest Transformation. Thank you so much for watching.